Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you a way of the four elements monk build guide for in Baldur's Gate 3. So the monk itself is a pretty powerful class because they get the flurry of blows and they can deal a ton of damage with their fists. However, the way of the four elements monk is actually interesting in the fact that it's almost like a wizard or a sorcerer and it can cast spells. So we're going to start with the monk here. You can take one level of fighter to get the constitution saving throw proficiency, but I think it's good to just go with the monk here. So... As for our ability scores, now, we're kind of a multi-attribute dependent. We need Wisdom, Dexterity, and Constitution the most, so we want to take our Wisdom up as high as we possibly can get it. Ideally, we'll get our Wisdom up to around 16. I think that that is the most optimal placement for our Wisdom. However, you're at the face of the party. Take it to 17. Use the Hags here to make it 18. That'll just give you a flat-out better damage. So, um, ideally, we'll take our Constitution up to about 14. You can go with an odd number and use Tavern Brawler to upgrade it one more. So that can be another option too if you don't want to go that route. So something like this can work too. Or you can put those points into like Charisma or Intelligence. So we're going to go with something like this for our stats as the level 1 Monk. So this build I'll be showing you a full all the way through guide. And uh, just some different options you can go with too if you'd like. So at level 2, we get our nice patient defense, step of the wind dash, and disengage. This gives us the ability to jump without using any bonus action, so we can jump around often with this. It's really nice. Now you can add 3 levels of Rogue Thief to get the extra bonus action for this build. That is a one way to do it. I'm not going to for the purposes of this. I'm going to show you the full way of the 4 elements. So that is our selected subclass. We get ourselves a Harmony of Water and Fire, which when we're not in combat, we can regain half our chi points rounded down. What's nice about this is... Uh, we get our key points back at a short rest, and we get this once per long rest. So we also have other ways to regain our key points, which is really nice. And uh, as for our Disciple of the Elements, there's some really great options here that I would recommend taking. Um, we get the Fangs of the Fire Snake here, which gives us a punch, hits our target from fire, and our next melee strikes deal one to f additional 1 to 4 fire damage. That's pretty nice, because we can do a lot of punching, so that is solid. This is... Typically with these spells, they're basically whatever the appearance is. So like this is Ray of Frost. That is Thunder Wave. Uh, Fist of the Unbroken Air, however, is a really nice one. So this pushes the target back. It's a 3d10 of bludgeoning damage. And it can potentially knock the creature prone, which is really nice. Um, Shaping of Ice is a exclusive to this build. It makes a block of ice, which can be climbed up, which is kind of nice. Sphere of Mental, Mental Balance is not bad for thunder damage, but I think there's better options. This is Chromatic Orb with... Uh, with key points instead some of these will take two key points some of these will take one um it really just depends what you want to use these are just cantrips basically so you're almost better off punching um water whip's not a bad spell either so i would say go to with these three here although fist of the four thunders is nice if you want to push back multiple targets but the fist of the unbroken air will knock back targets six meters so um it can the water whip can also pull creatures towards you so we got lots of great options there for defense we can get spells like Scorching Ray and Fireball, which is awesome. And at level 4, we get ourselves a feat. Now, I would recommend taking your Wisdom up, because it's going to give us better damage, better armor class, and better... Um, uh, we get our, we'll be able to add this to our punches as well, so that is really good. You can go with Dexterity too, but I think Wisdom is a little bit better at this point in the game, so we're going to take that. At next level 5, we get our extra attack. So, while this is kind of a casting class, we also get the ability to punch twice. And then punch again with Flurry of Blows. We also get the Stunning Strikes, which are also really good. Possibly stuns a target. So this is our crowd control. And uh, it actually is quite strong. We can also cycle out our spells if you want to replace spells at any point. Now, at next level, we get two really good ones. We get the Embrace of the Inferno, which does uh, is basically Scorching Ray. Uh, it does three, flaming, uh, three fire attacks, and it uses three key points. However, I think Clench of the North Wind is actually better. Holds an enemy still, they can't move, act, or react, and attacks within 3 meters are always critical hits. So we can fall, We can start off with Clench of the North Wind, and then run in, punch them to their face with a critical. Extremely useful. And uh, I think that Hold Person normally is a really good spell, but having it here is great too. So, Stillness of Mind, if we get Charmed or Frightened, we can automatically cost Stillness of Mind, which will give us an extra bonus action and give us our key points back, which is awesome. Evasion is huge. This is something that's exclusive to the rogue and the monk. So, uh, whenever a spell would deal half damage on a successful dexterity saving throw, it deals no damage. And then if we fail the throw, we only take half damage. So straight up, we go from taking full damage and half damage to now taking half damage or no damage. Really, really good. So, uh, that is one nice thing about that monk. 
And we can also change out one of our spells here. If you find you're not using, like, let's say, Water Whip, for example, you can swap it out and then take, like, your Embrace of the Inferno. So that is an option there if you wanted to do something like that. You could you could easily just uh, swap out your spells there. Now, for our next feat, I think it's good to go with Tavern Brawler, honestly. Tavern Brawler is underrated. as more so focused on the open hand bunk, but... One nice thing about this is it allows us to round off our, our uh, constitution, but it's going to add our strength modifier twice to damage and attack rolls. So whenever we punch, we don't miss. And that actually just flat out increases our, our damage output. So I think that that's a solid one to go with. Some people might not like it because you don't want to... Some people try to treat this as more of a caster. Well, it does cast. It's also a monk, and monks like to punch. We also get the unarmed uh, movement, so whenever we don't wear armor, we get to... We can tr jump an additional 6 meters and difficult terrain doesn't slow us down. That's really nice. And we get improved elemental casting. So, your, infin your affinity with elemental key defense, several of your four elements features. Deal an additional die of damage. Your clenth of the north wind can hold an additional creature, so our hold person can deal more damage. And the embrace of the inferno fires an extra ray. This is a good time to take our embrace of the inferno because that gives us four flaming rays now, so that's a nice damage option. And, uh, yeah, what's nice about that is our hold person can now hold two people, so we can hold two people and punch. We also get immunity to poison, increased movement speed, la-da-da, pretty good. And then, at level 11, this is where the build comes together with our final Disciple of the Elements. Flames of the Phoenix is the clear winner here. Four key points, but it's Fireball. Everyone loves Fireball. Uh, we also get the ability to fly if we want to, but you can also become an Illithid and take that. And if you're on PC, I would recommend becoming an Illithid. And then you can also edit... You, there's If you check out my channel, I have ways to remove the Illithid veins and everything. So if you don't want your character looking ugly, um, I'd recommend taking Flames of the Phoenix. But you can take Ride the Wind if you really, really want to. And Gong of the Summit's not terrible, but Fireball is hard to beat. So we're going to go with Fireball. And uh, yeah, for our final level here... There's a couple ways we can go about this. So, if we want, we can stick with a full 12 levels of Monk. However, you can add in the Fighter to get some extra weapon proficiencies and medium armor and shields. However, the Monk is actually probably best suited to just stay as a single level class. Another option is adding in the Wizard. And you can add in the Wizard because it's going to give us some cantrips like Mage Hand, which are nice to have. But also, we can learn we can learn some, um, some spells from scrolls and we can get things like Hold Person. For the purpose of this, I think it's actually best to stick with our full 12 levels of Monk, because that way we get us another, ourselves another feat. Now, taking our Wisdom up to 20 or Dexterity up to 20 is kind of like the ideal way about going about this. I'm going to go with the Increased Wisdom, because we have Boots that can add our Wisdom modifier to the damage, so having High Wisdom works really well here. In addition, we also have the uh, Flurry of Blows being able to deal a ton of damage with Tavern Brawler. So, here it is. I'm using these weapons here. You don't have to use them. They scale off your strength. Uh, I have a video guide on how to get permanent flame blades if you really want to use the flame blades. They look really cool and they deal a ton of damage. So I like having them there just for like your weapon attack if you want pure fire damage. I'm using this scrappy pugilist circlet for an initial two damage when surrounded by two or more foes. Typically we will be, so that flat out two damage is really nice. We got 22 armor class from our wisdom and dexterity. Um, I'm using the Ring of Protection and the Cloak of Protection there for extra armor class. If you want to take it up to 23, you can use the Evasive Shoes. But I'm using the Boots of Uninhibited Kashigo, so whenever the wearer, deals the wearer deals additional damage equal to their Wisdom modifier with Unarmed Strikes. We have the Gloves of Soul Catching, the best Monk item. Uh, additional 1 to 10 Force Damage, which is doubled on our Flurry of Blows. And once per turn, we can regain 10 Health Points or get advantage on Attack Rolls and Saving Throws. Plus two to Constitution. I am using the Constitution Amulet, but even if I wasn't, um, we'd still have a good amount of health there. This will give us advantage on our Constitution saving throw checks, so we can hold our Concentration of the Clench of the Wind. So, that is really nice. And also, the Vest of Soul Rejuvenation, perfect monk armor. Uh, gives us one to four health points when we succeed a saving throw, which is going to be quite often. And then we can also make an unarmed attack against any attacker that misses, and plus two armor class. So, pretty solid. Now, we don't have to use weapons. We can go unarmed with our attacks, but I like to have that there just as an option. But our Flurry of Blows, look at that. 46 to 78 damage. So we get quite a bit of damage there from that, which is awesome. Um, and uh, on top of that, we also have our Stunning Strikes. So we can use Stunning Strike. The melee one is pretty cool because it'll deal fire damage. They're pretty close in terms of the amount of damage that they'll deal. 
But we got our Flames of the Phoenix, so we got ourselves a Fireball there, which is just awesome to have. Didn't hurt me, Zora, but uh, it will use up your key points pretty quickly. But we do have the Harmony of Water and Fire, which we can use to regain our key points any time. And uh, it'll give us half our key points back, which is awesome. But we also have things like the F Flame of the Fire Snake, which deals um, our fist damage to a target. So that's pretty cool. We can uh, do it from range, as you can see there. They do have a save from it, which is interesting. But then we can also use something like our Water Whip, Knock Prone, or Pull. So those are pretty cool because we can pull creatures around or knock them around with water. So that knocked him prone. <laughs> pretty nice. Um, we also got our Step of the Wind there. So we got many options for survivability's sake. We got the ability to attack with our offhand. Although Flurry of Blows is typically going to be the best option for damage. Upwards of 78 damage is really nice. And yeah, we got Fireball and Scorch and Ray. The cool thing is Scorch and Ray will deal four beams of damage. So that can be pretty good damage output just, just from that. But then we also have Hold Person that can work on um, two targets. Which is great, because we can hold purse and then go in and flurry of blows punch them, and this will be critical. So this can deal a ton of damage, and when in doubt, fireball it out. Um, so you can literally just drop a huge fireball and hit a ton of people. Flames of the Fire Snake, pretty good, but fireball is hard to go wrong. So that is a really nice thing about this build, is you got options, and you can punch. So our punching attacks are typically going to be the best ones to use. Um, I feel bad attacking my teammates, but... Uh, just want to show that off and then we also got the bonus action unarmed strike which is decent and then we got our soul snare heal from the item or from our armor there so pretty solid build overall we got a lot of damage options and yeah the way of the four elements monk is quite powerful in baldur's gate 3 so if you found this video useful please leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video